You're welcome to this part of the morning where we talk about what happened some time ago in history. Sometimes, today we'll be talking about one that happened before either of us were born. I'm very sure you weren't born in 1946. <laughs> <laughs> but for uh, 2010, we both were adults already. So, um, yes, today in history. We start with the Halliburton bribery scandal. Um, something happened on this day with that um, a matter. Uh, a former vice president of the United States, um, that's the person of Dick Shani, uh, was, um, he was um, charged over a $180 million bribe. Um, what about now? Let me give you a little bit of uh, background. The, this all dates back to 1994. Uh, when the Nigerian government launched what people described then as a very ambitious plan to build the Bonny Island Natural Liquefied Gas Project and made billionaires of many people. Uh, people were vying to get into um, that, the, the lead and um, in a bid to do that, there was, I'm trying to play down the magnitude of the um, uh, bribery and the corruption that pervaded that otherwise laudable idea. Yes. It's really a um, story. Dick Cheney, yes, is the focus because, you know, today he was charged. You know, but the, the story really comes from 1994 and from a lawyer called Jeffrey Tesla. So Jeffrey Tesla um, is, was eventually the one who testified um, and pleaded guilty to the bribery that happened between 1995 and uh, 20, 2009 or 2010. Um, and it was a bribery that covered, like you said, $180 million. Tesla basically was you know, in charge of most of it. And it then rubbed off on Dick Cheney, rubbed off on a lot of people in, in um, HSBC, uh, the bank, rubbed off on a lot of people in um, Halliburton, and then a, an, a subsidiary of Halliburton, KBR. Um, a lot of Nigerian officials also were um, involved in this scam, and that includes um, of course, these are still allegations. The former president, um, well, for, for, um, Abdul Salami Abubakar, um, was named. Um, uh, the former governor of Bauchi State was also named. And um, I'm going to get his name, some other person. Yeah, we're we, we, we mentioning this today, even though it happened on this day that um, um, he was uh, charged allegations he denied and uh, the flip side of all of this is that um, he, he was discharged later acquitted of all the uh, charges uh, much later uh, but it, it's basically um, the a network of secretive banks that yes. you know took all the funds that was Ghana must go we thought it was Ghana must go now Ghana must go was to take monies cash in millions to Nigerian officials um, for the engineering and construction work that was planned for that uh, Bunny Island natural liquefied gas project. Uh, a spokesperson for the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC at the time, that's uh, Femi Baba Femi, um, explained where the charges stemmed from. Um, we're highlighting this because as at the time that the um, a crime was alleged to have been committed, um, before he became uh, the vice president of the United States, um, he was with Halliburton um, during the time he served as its top executive. Um, but like I said, he was cleared after a 35 billion million um, US dollars uh, settlement with the federal government um, of Nigeria. Uh, that issue is so complex. The, I mean, every day, it's just like the Abacha uh, loot that we keep uncovering. Every day, something new. The other day in the news, there was um, an issue that has to do the same Tesla that you're talking. Yes, he admitted yes. to um, and apologized for being a part of such a corrupt Nigerian system. system. And, and that's, that, that's, that's, that's what he one, said. One part of the story that um, I had mixed emotions about, you know, when he supposedly was apologizing, you know, he made a lot of statements that seemed like 
you know, he was infected with the Nigerian exactly. uh, bribery and corruption. Um, it's know, already in his disease. DNA. Apologies, sir, but nobody pushed <laughs> you to take bribe. You <laughs> chose to take it because you could. You only apologized it because you were caught. Um, this is what happened today um, in history. But let me just tell you a bit about what the lawyer to the former vice president of the United States has said when this matter was raised again. Um, his lawyer said that the Department of Justice and Securities and that of the Exchange Commission had investigated uh, the joint venture extensively and found no suggestion of any impropriety uh, by him as, uh, in his role as the CEO of Halliburton. And uh, he wanted on to say any suggestion of misconduct on his part made now years later is entirely baseless. Uh, so that's, um, I wouldn't go into all of the details of what happened because we can't even begin to break it down. It's still a bit fuzzy, to be honest. I can't even wrap my head around all um, the intricacies that went down with the uh, Bonny Island natural liquefied gas project. But the one thing that is like the Ajokuta still that keeps taking yeah. money and we don't see anything from it. We haven't seen anything from it yet. So that was one of the things that happened today in history. On December 7, 2010, um, Nigeria's EFCC charged former U.S. Vice President Dick Cheney um, over a bribery scheme involving oil services firm Halliburton Co. There were times when Jeffrey Tesla um, facilitated the uh, delivery or the drop-off of bags carrying as much as a million dollars. Mm -hmm. to hotels in Abuja. It's, um, it, it happened more than 20 times where cash, I'm talking hard currency, United States dollars, um, was brought into Nigeria, uh, given to persons in different hotels in uh, the Federal Capital Territory. Um, the Chief of Staff uh, to Abdusalam Abubakar, Abu Major General Chris Garuba, um, he eventually was then uh, Governor of Bauchi State, was the person who was one of the people named in this, including his wife and family members, um, who allegedly all had offshore accounts with HSBC in Switzerland. Um, and uh, numerous places. Chris Tesla and his wife also eventually forfeited. Chris himself, actually, or Jeffrey, I beg your pardon, Tesla, uh, forfeited um, about $132 million, $149 million to the United States government and uh, served 21 months in jail after all of this. The funniest part of this whole story is the, the idea that Dick Cheney was meant to be extradited to Nigeria <laughs> to <laughs> face in charges. <laughs> all right, let's, let's come back home <laughs> and see what happened on this day. It's no yes. good news, actually. Yes, um, um, it now takes we're, <laughs> we're moving into um, uh, something else. Uh, two brothers, Henry and Charles. Uh, popularly known because of their affiliations to the movement for the emancipation of the Niger Delta. On this day in 2010, Charles Orca was charged by the Nigerian government for a treason and terrorism um, and eventually, you know, later in the year was sentenced to uh, life imprisonment. Uh, but it was on this day that he was charged with regards to the October 1st bombings that happened in the federal capital territory. Um, his brother, um, uh, Henry Oka, also is serving a 24-year prison uh, sentence in South Africa for the same incident. Uh, later in the year, of course, with other testimonies and other you know, conversations that happened after he was arrested, after Charles was arrested, um, there were numerous conversations on what truly happened and who was truly responsible for the bombings. Um, um, Henry, I believe, had alleged that the government then, the Good Bella Jonathan government um, officials had called him to negotiate and to ask that he blames the bombing on some, some, someone else because men had already claimed responsibility for the bombings. And so Henry alleges that the good, good luck Bill Jonathan government officials called him to say, hey, tell men to withdraw that um, um, statement that we would like to blame it on somebody else. But obviously the government denies any of all of that. And um, there was also issues concerning his trial in South Africa. Um, people say that it was a closed door trial. He wasn't given a fair trial. Um, and it seems like the government had a lot of uh, things that they wanted to cover up. It was like a government facilitated trial uh, to keep these people silent for the longest time. Well, but these as, are all, far, all as, allegations. as far as I am concerned, um, as flawed as our legal system 
is um, this one, the judge said he was convinced uh, by the um, evidence from the federal government linking Henry Oka yes. to the um, bombing that killed 12 Nigerians on this day. Someone had to pay. Yeah. And um, he was not the only one. There were three others. He was arraigned along with three others on this day. Um, he, he, he claims he was just a victim. Um, he really wasn't part of, uh, he, was an, he had no record of criminality until the men uh, scenario, um, the bombing uh, scenario came on. Let's also put on record uh, that um, his brother, um, Henry Oka, insists that he is not the leader of men, as they were alleging uh, that he is not the leader uh, of men at all. Uh, the flip side of all of this is the delay in handing out judgment. This happened Seven in 2010. Years. And then it took over 10 years. In 2018, in March 2018, uh, was when he was finally convicted and sentenced. I'm talking about Charles Okanau uh, by Justice uh, Gabriel Kolawoli. Yes. It's just, it's just, it's just um, amazing. But at the end of the day, uh, justice seemed to have prevailed. That matter has gone. Uh, but it, it also reminds us of, you know, these things that are festering um, in the background. I saw a video the other day, allegedly, of some people threatening to blow up pipeline um, that was circulating um, on social media. And it got me worried. It took me back to those very dark days when you hear one minute everywhere is calm, the next minute there's a bomb explosion. You're destroying our own infrastructure uh, that would help um, uh, grow um, our local government. And then it brings us back to the conversation. Since the agitation uh, with men, what has happened with the Niger Delta region? Are they better off? Have, they be, have, have, have their welfare improved? Um, the other day, they talked about cleaning of um, um, the yeah, Diogoni the land. Delta. There was a big fanfare. Uh, people came all over. What is the status of the work to clean up Ogoni land? We still do not know. Um, so, yes, until we deal with the issues really from the root, we will continue to have a situation where people are compelled um, wisely or unwisely to take the law into your hands in order to push for change. It's like, like we're talking about the NSARS um, uh, protests. Now we have people who can't access their accounts. Christmas is around the corner. People were spending a whole lot of money and they want to live as happily as they can, even with the bad economic situation um, in Nigeria. And you're depriving them of that. And then the victims are watching, looking at how um, uh, people in authority are trying to sabotage the work that the panel is doing. I, I don't know how I'm connecting all of this together, but it remains that if people do not see good governance, we cannot eradicate instances like this unfortunate scenario where two brothers are incarcerated um, because of actions. They, they continue to deny that they did not uh, take part in. Um, uh, but we also need to put here that um, during his sentencing, um, Charles Orker, um, um, asked, his lawyers asked the judge to tamper justice with mercy, considering that he had never committed any crime before, he had dependents and all of that. Uh, but the judge in his wisdom said he cannot give him a preferential treatment because one other person is already serving life in prison for the same crime. So um, his case cannot uh, be different. Um, whether fair or not, until he's able to prove his own case, um, they're both incarcerated. And yes. as far as the law goes, they were responsible for uh, the bombing um, of, and that killed 12 people on October 1, 2010. Yes, sir. all right. Well, I guess that's about it for the Henry and uh, Charles Oka story. Um, yeah, I, I was going to go a little deeper into the controversy surrounding all of this. Yeah, you know, you're free to. I think we have some I, I time, think, um, really. I mean, no, I was, I was really just going to, you know, one of the statements that you made, you know, that the, the justice or the judge in South Africa, you know, from the evidence given by the Nigerian government was able to find him guilty. And it's, no, 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 I'm not talking about South things, Africa. I'm talking oh, yeah. about Henry, um, I mean, Charles, Charles Oka, not um, uh, Henry it, Oka. It's really just about the, the idea uh, that... Um, 
people, a lot of people have alleged, you know, that these were uh, politically uh, motivated. motivated. Well, uh, we, we can't deal we can't, on allegation. Yeah, of the, the allegations. What, what we know, at least, um, the, they were unable to prove their own case. Mm. The government went to court. There is a system that works. And the reason we have laws is so we can checkmate some of our excesses. So if the law has, you know, run its course and sentenced these people, as it stands, they remain convicted until maybe a superior court says, okay, you are not guilty of the crime. And then we unravel the conversation. Maybe there is some validity to the claims that these men are innocent of the crimes, or maybe um, they were uh, deceived or something, however you want to look at it. But as it stands today, these men um, were found guilty of uh, the crime of terrorism. Um, against the Nigerian state. I'll move away from that now and go to 1946. Yes. It's Technology. Called, uh... <laughs> my, my, my mom, when we used to play when we were much smaller, she would say, Technozo. <laughs> what does that mean? That's technology now. In Igbo, technozo. If, you're, if you don't know what Igbo language is, Igbo language is from the eastern part of Nigeria. If you're watching from other parts of Africa. So it's technozo when, when she wants to make fun. Technology. Anyway, um, the, it, it was described as the, um, one of the deadliest uh, hotel fires in the U.S. It happened on this day in 1946. Um, it killed 119 hotel occupants. Um, uh, initially, when it was built, I guess, it, the hotel is located in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. It's called the Winecuff Hotel. Uh, it was uh, advertised at the time as um, absolutely fireproof. That picture you're looking at actually uh, won the uh, Pulitzer Prize uh, for photography. 1947. Uh, it, 1947, yes. a year after. But let's uh, continue with uh, the background now. Um, the steel structure of the building survived, but every other thing collapsed. And they say... As, um, this scenario and another one that happened subsequently, I think the La Sela Hotel fire compelled serious changes in um, the way staircase and all of that um, the yeah, building. So, so, so the, the La Sela Hotel um, fire happened in June. Um, it was, uh, I think, about 61 people died in that fire. There's another one that also happened in June in Iowa um, that uh, um, cost uh, 19 lives um, also. Um, the, the what now wine cough hotel happened a lot later in the year in December 1946 um, and th this really uh, these events really were where the start for um, better planning with regards fire safety in buildings across uh, Europe and across the world because Weinkoff, as you earlier had mentioned was rumored to be fireproof but when they said it was fireproof they really were talking about the building itself, but not about the occupants in the building. And so, yes, the building may have been able to survive a fire, but the people in the in the building w were not protected against a fire. And so there was then better legislation, better planning, better um, engineering moving forward into what it really meant to be uh, yeah. a fireproof um, a building. Uh, the sad thing for me here is the, 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 the owner of the hotel died yes. in his own. It's like um, you're eating your own soup, on the, yes. um, uh, on, unfortunately. That's not the proper analogy, but it's, that's what came to my mind. The man and his wife lived at, I think, uh, a floor of the uh, hotel, and when the fire came, there was no escape. So, I mean, who really are you going to hold culpable uh, for the deaths of the other people? When the one who felt that it was safe enough you know, to be in because he believed in it, also died. But it, 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 it was safe enough because of what they, what they originally thought, you know, was making it fireproof. And that is for the building itself. Uh, but if, if the residents and if you still have combustible elements that are used in building uh, the hotel or, you know, or that edifice, it, it, it's not really, really fireproof. And, that, and that's really why the conversation and the policies with regards buildings um, had to change after this. They didn't um, this really change. Well, they didn't really some change of the things that they still used to build, when you see it, uh, you ask yourself, is this a house or and, something and, and else? It makes, <laughs> it makes you also remember Grenfell, the Grenfell Tower in 2017 mm. um, in the UK that um, cost about 72 lives. Um, there were also those 
you know, rumors, or there were also those allegations that it was supposed to be fireproof. But eventually, when those when that incident happened three years ago, and the, all those lives were lost, you know, totally different conversation happened. It, it, it was one of the worst disasters that had hit the UK ever. Um, and since then, there have been investigations over investigations on who really uh, must pay for it. And um, same thing, you know, you, these things just make me remember when they say, oh, you know, this thing's fireproof or this thing is, you know, sink proof. The, the Titanic the was, was also... Um, Let me was say also it like a local to... girl. Take it with a pinch of salt. <laughs> Take it with a pinch of salt, people. When somebody comes up and say this thing, uh, when they want to sell you something, say this thing is a hundred percent. <laughs> it is not to it's you have to find out much. for real. But over the years, things have changed when it comes to hotels and how it is built. I guess in that country, a lot um, will continue to uh, change. But the, the few places I have been to, some of the buildings still remain. <laughs> You'll see a so, very beautiful so very place the and then you hit the wall. There is nothing in there. It's just plywood and wood. And you're like, what if something happens? It, How am I going to get out it of should here? Also, it should also make you ask when you get into these very very big edifices you know how many exit points does it have oh now if it's, you're, it's if a you're rule in, yeah it, it's a yeah. rule now it, so because i've been to i've been to nightclubs that have just one exit you know they were poorly built they probably weren't built to be in nightclubs uh, not in lagos um, they were probably weren't built to be nightclubs originally, but eventually when they were transformed, you know, those certain details weren't put into place. And so you realize that if there is a fire, if there's a problem here, everybody has just one exit to, to, make, to go out of the building. And if that exit is blocked, if the fire is at that exit, then you know, you're screwed. So, well, so these are important things that people need to also start paying attention to when building, when um, purchasing, when maybe also being um, you know in, in certain places the world trade center also was supposed to be um fireproof and supposed that's to be that's a different scenario entirely as target that was a, a bomb directed there it wasn't a bomb. Um, it was, i mean it was an planes. airplane yes it, what? how fireproof can you be can you use a Oh, that, that but it, it, even it, it, it was it wasn't it, those weren't buildings that were expected to come crumbling down like a you know like butter simply because of a fire in oh so i'll get it okay i'm just saying let's let's they end really this went in, the conversation saying. and move on to something else just saying <laughs> just saying all right Hello. um hope you enjoyed the news please do subscribe to our youtube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates